Welcome to my workshop. I'm Richard McVeigh, also known as the Butch Biscuit. Many of you may know me personally, and the rest of you may have, at this point, come to me from Pressure Luck Cooking, uh, which is the blog my partner, Jeffrey Eisner, runs. So you may be familiar with that. You may uh, know me from some of his videos. Uh, if anything, you know that I'm not great on video. So I'm not even going to shoot this 20 times to make it look perfect. Because I know it's not. This is my first video. Jeffrey's not even in the room. And eh, I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. So if you take anything away from these videos, it's that nothing turns out perfect. You do the best you can. And you're unafraid to try something new. And that's what we're going to do today. So if you're like me, you inherit a lot of things of dubious value. I never turn down an heirloom. There's something that has some utility to it and has some type of beauty to it, or at least a story, you can bring some interest to it. This is my newest project. Wash stand from, uh, that I inherited from my family. Uh, was made or bought in probably the 1880s, 1890s maybe. And this one's not even perfect yet. I'm gonna go do some touch up on the bottom down here. Chalk paint is unforgiving and you need a lot of wax on top of it for one. But the top is, I'm very proud of. The top is beautiful and it was not like this before. I mean, look at what it looked like. The top was just dark. It was fudge colored. You couldn't see the grain of this beautiful, like, oak. I haven't stripped in about six years, and it's really changed. Stripping used to be a really quick process, you know? It was like 15 minutes of waiting, and then you just scrape all this goop off, and it looks great, and it's so satisfying because you can start seeing the wood. It's not like that anymore. So regardless, there are new versions. These orangey, jelly gross things that that look kind of like a smoothie that you're going to brush all over this so i'm congratulating myself already for this piece because i think it looks beautiful i've never seen this piece this wood look so good <clears throat> so this piece was in my family i don't know how long my dad inherited it and cannot remember where it came from whenever my parents inherited this we lived in a house that my mother herself had inherited it had been a four bedroom two bath house uh, that once had housed nine people in her family. And when we lived in it, we didn't need the fourth bedroom. My parents said, two of those boys can share. I'm the middle child. Guess who was always sharing a bedroom? Me, right? So <laughs> stick around for all the middle child angst you want. My mother converted the smallest bedroom in the house into a bathroom. This was her makeup table. She had a little bench in front of it. She had her makeup mirror on it. She had other things on it over in the corner. Um, so this was the spot for her to just like, you know, get the heck away from us boys. She decided she would rather get away from us in a bathtub. So she put a jacuzzi where this was in the bathroom and this got shipped off to my dad's log cabin. And it sat in the corner of that cabin, had no water, no power, you know, nothing. It was in Southern Alabama, so it got really hot, occasionally colder than freezing every year, but this, this had no protection. So it started to wear away and look a little rougher and rougher. So I'll tell you a funny story about this piece. While I was at the cabin, my dad suspected we had a mouse problem. So we went to find this mouse. We walked in the cabin and he was behind me. And I came up to this piece, started to open this drawer. As soon as I opened it, I felt some resistance. There was like stuffing or like the inside of a mattress in there. And my dad had started to back away without saying anything to me. At that point, I didn't recognize what was going on. He did. So I got the drawer about this far open and a rat, not a mouse, a rat about this long, just leaped out, ran across my feet and out the front door. My dad's about two inches shorter than I am. And he, I've never seen him jump as high as he did. He was in the rafters, had jumped so high and the rat just ran out the door and we cleaned it out. You know, all that gross, nasty stuffing had been from like blankets. He or she, I don't know, made him uh, a nest um, in this drawer. So we hope for no more of that. I got this piece when I was in college. I got my first, like the first TV I had bought and not inherited. I put on this thing. I put it on here, I put it with my DVD surround sound and a VCR that I still had. And, yeah, I filled the bottom drawer with CDs. I was in college. It wasn't too bad. Piece. I did miss something in this piece. I left something out. There's still another piece. Um, this 
would have gone on the back of this washstand. This would have been something you'd see in a guest room. Uh, something guests would have used if you've seen those antique pitcher and bowls. Guests would have been given a pitcher of water from the well, likely, and it would sit down here and they'd have towels hanging on this piece. And this was before running water, obviously. So this piece up here, optional and kind of obsolete. Uh, when my mom used it as a like makeup table, she had it with towels hanging on it. It looked nicer than this, but not a hell of a lot better. So I've asked you guys about how to do this. So two options here, we can paint it the same color as the bottom. It will be easier option, obviously. You don't have to even strip it. Or we can strip it like this and refinish it. Um, you are about even on the voting. So the winners of the voting were the Stripping and Staining Coalition. Since I couldn't show you this, how I did this, um, step by step, I'm going to show you this. So stay tuned. We're going to strip this. Personally, I am of the paint opinion and I'll tell you why. The vertical pieces of this piece are painted. This is a vertical piece. I think it should be painted. This, to isolate this beautiful new top, this color is prettier than it's ever been. Um, to stain this top to match, I think would distract you from the line of that furniture. So we want it to echo the more vertical lines here. So I vote for paint, but we're going to strip it first. And, you know, let me know in the comments if I was completely wrong. All right, so let's go through some of the materials you're going to need for stripping. So to start with, we're stripping. This is the first thing we're going to use is some stripping gel. It's kind of like the consistency of a smoothie. Secondly, you're going to want some mineral spirits. Uh, mineral spirits are good for cleaning up between rounds of stripping, for seeing where finishing still lies, for cleaning up your brushes. Uh, it's a good thing to have around. It is flammable. Be careful with it. Any brand clear cling wrap, uh, you're going to learn this while we're doing it. The stripper uh, takes longer to work. So to keep it from drying out, we're going to wrap it in this. You're going to need some sanders. I use a hand sander here and a multi-tool that is hooked up with a deta detail sander. Um, you're also going to need paper for these sanders, uh, starting with 60, uh, 60 grit, uh, which is very coarse sandpaper, probably a 60, a 120, a 150, and a 220. Those are the good things to keep around. Also, you're going to need sanding blocks. I have some starting. This is 60 grit. This goes up to, this is about 120 or 150. Obviously, this one's worn out. I'll get a better one. And this one's like 220. So you could probably get away with three different grades between 60 and 220 on the sanding, uh, on the sanding blocks. <clears throat> You're going to need some steel wool. This is coarse and fine. This is probably a number one or a number two. I think it goes up to three and down to triple zero. This is a double zero. It goes one finer than this. Uh, this is fine enough. You just need some, a coarse one and a fine one. You're going to be able to get the stripper in these in the grain better with these. You're going to need like a finishing pad. This is a, like a scouring pad, but a finishing pad. This is good for the very end where you just have a little bit and you're just rubbing that last little bit of finish out. Almost forgot you're going to need some gloves. I've got some nitrile gloves here. Stripper will eat through gloves eventually. So these gloves might rip, but I haven't found that the stripper uh, will irritate your skin like the old-fashioned stripper would. I'm going to apply this stripper really thick. So you're just going to brush it on. See how weird and goopy it comes out. I'm just going to put a bunch on and hope I can brush it around. So you're just going to brush it around and keep, keep it really thick on this stuff. So this stuff, just keep it on pretty thick. You can put some more on there if you need to. We're going to get it all around this piece. Just very thick. I'm not going to worry with the back of it. The back of it is going to be facing the wall. There's no need to see. Like my mom used to say, anybody who looks back there deserves what they see. Whatever you do though, don't let it dry. Uh, what we're going to do instead is let it sit. Cover it in plenty of wrap so it stays wet. You can keep this stuff on for 24 hours as long as it stays wet. If it dries, you're going to be reapplying just to get the old stuff off. I use a disposable brush here. It's going to get gross. It's going to 
get goopy. We don't want to miss any spots because we'll have to reapply it there. They, this stuff really goes through these disposable brushes. That's why they're disposable. So as you can see, we have this fully covered with a liberal application of stripper. What, uh, the next thing we're going to do is wrap this baby up. I'm just going to start pulling pieces off and wrapping it. The idea is just to keep the moisture in so that this stuff doesn't dry out. That way you get more time. It buys you a lot more time to let it sit and work. You know, wrap it up like you're doing your roots. All right, so with that, this baby is wrapped. Um, all right, so we let this sit overnight, probably about 10 to 12 hours. Um, you could go as long as 24, but I'm gonna show you what we can do. So first thing we can do here is remove our saran wrap. This is gonna get messy enough, so while you're removing it, I would try to get some of the bigger globs of this stripper off. It's gonna be really gross. It's gonna smell, make sure your gloves are on when you're doing this. Um, not necessarily for irritation purposes, just for nastiness purposes. It's gonna be gross. To get this off, to begin with, you're gonna want a scraper, um, a putty knife or something like that. Uh, not like a chisel or anything, just something that's gonna scrape it off the surface and we're gonna start scraping. So you can notice already the stuff where it was bright orange before is like this goopy, gross brown color. Yeah, see all that finish that's coming off of there? That's dark brown. You're not gonna pull all the color off this, off this while you're doing it. You are pulling some, you can tell from here, but that's from the finish that's absorbed some of the stain. So I'm continuing to remove all of this stripper and finish from this piece. This is the first approach at stripping and the video is poor after this so I didn't include it but I attempted to sand it after um, which clogged the sandpaper and so we uh, scraped it down with some uh, steel wool uh, with some more mineral spirits and stripper to get a little bit more off. Uh, and then we immediately uh, applied more stripper. So you'll see me wrapping this again for the second time. Uh, we wrap it up. You know, I think we just do it two more times. I probably could have done this a third time. I believe with the wash stand I did four and maybe like kind of a fourth and a half time. So after removing the saran wrap once, uh, you see me taking off the stripper and giving Notice these spots where it's very dark. I'm giving some attention to those spots where it's very dark. You see me using the steel wool and then continuing to sand down a little bit more. And we continue to sand with the sanding block. That's easier to get the crevices and the spots. We stepped it up to the sander and continue to rub that all around on all the contours. The um, detail sander is definitely help, helpful for getting in those spots very well. Use your mask when you get further down because your particles are going to be finer and finer every time. So we made sure to cover my face. Okay. All right, now we're ready to go. We've got some stain. Um, I have some gunstock stain, which is the color I put on the top of this. You don't want to shake it, you want to stir it. You've got a paint stick, you can do that. Uh, we'll do it with this one first because this is probably enough to get through it. Um, I have used this gunstock before on other projects and I find it to be a very good color. You can go ahead and wipe this on this cloth. This is the cloth we're going to use and we're just going to dip it and wipe, dip it and wipe, dip it and wipe. And you're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes and counting. All right, we got 10 minutes. So you just dip the cloth in the stain and start rubbing the piece down. It's simple enough. You don't care if it's, there's too much on it. There's spots like the bottom here where it's really thirsty. So you see me applying a couple of coats on there. You see it drying out the the cloth like really quickly so uh, you have to kind of go over these a couple of times 
just don't care if it's like slick or, or covered a lot. You're going to let it sit and then you're going to wipe off the excess at the end. So that's really all this step is. And it's pretty quick and a little bit of waiting. Okay, so after watching this thing soak up this stain, I realized 10 minutes is too long, so I'm going to start taking it off already. So just wipe it down with a fresh cloth. This is simple enough. It's just wiping down the piece, making sure you get as much as you can off of it. You're going to let it dry after that before you put the varnish on. Okay, our next step is polyurethane. Make sure never to shake this. It puts bubbles in it and it's gonna be a, a problem. Um, you're gonna need to do probably two to three coats on this. And you're gonna have to sand it with a fine sandpaper between, between those. So you're just making sure to use long strokes with the polyurethane and to re-dip anytime you start to get thin here. You want to be sure not to miss any spots because if you miss spots, then it's really a pain to go back. You have to kind of even it out with a sander. So make sure you're getting it covered evenly, but completely more importantly. We want to sit and let this dry. You're going to have to sand it after the first coat. It's going to have little brush marks in it. It's going to be rough. Uh, you want to let this sit until it's no longer tacky. And we're back. Uh, this has had time to dry. It is not tacky. Uh, it looks really good. Uh, obviously, it's not as smooth as you would like it to be. So we are going to sand this down with some uh, really fine sandpaper, like 240 is what this count is. Uh, the important thing here is to not feel like you have to take everything back off again. Uh, you're just basically uh, putting some grip onto that finish. Uh, making it a little even so that the next coat goes on more smoothly. You make sure you're getting all of the crevices well because otherwise there will be a lot of buildup with the multiple coats in those crevices and it'll look really gunky. Uh, you want to make sure it looks nice and clean. Then we once again apply the second coat of polyurethane. I say varnish sometimes but I mean polyurethane. Uh, just that finish all right are y'all ready to see our final product you have seen this piece this top that has been converted so let's look and see how this is so this would go right here looks pretty good it's a little darker than the top right here so maybe i should have scrubbed a little harder done a little more to get it really down to the bare wood if you want to get this this looks good it looks better than it did with this piece it's more of a period piece we have running water here thankfully so we don't need a wash stand in the guest room we have a bathroom jeff and i don't really have a cutesy you know decor we don't have chintz and twall around our sense of decor is not quite as old-fashioned so i am going to take it off and it's not going to be near there so when you don't consider that they're going to be together you don't need it i'm considering using this as a shelf instead attaching an oak stained oak piece right here putting it in a narrow hallway so just a you know, a shelf maybe this deep. And then so you could put knickknacks and tchotchkes and stuff on a little table in a narrow hallway. And it kind of has a mantle look, but a, a dainty table leg look to it too. So that's how I would use this if I'm going to save it right now. I'm just going to hold on to it. So follow me if you want to continue to follow me on this journey. I'm going to refresh things that I've inherited. I'm going to, you know, show you new uses for things that I find in antique places. I'm going to share, you know, Things that like decor, you know. I found a stuffed pheasant for $19 at an antique place around here. And now I'm kind of obsessed with game birds. They're not going to be stuffed animals all around like a steakhouse. If there's any motif that's appropriate in the country, it's birds. I like to try something I haven't tried before. I like to refresh things that are old. I like to tell stories while I'm doing them. Some of these stories are funny. I always tell people that newspapers and pharmacies attract the most interesting people. And much of my early life, I worked at one of these. I have some interesting and funny stories that I'd love to tell you. No names, of course. So when I get up enough gumption, I'm also going to make new things. I have some things around that I'm collecting and I have ideas for. So hopefully you'll be around for that. I welcome you to join me as I strip and recover, as I plant and harvest, and as I build and restore. <laughs>